All right, we're pulling another Subaru engine, and a lot of questions have come to me. A lot of people have had the same question, is how do you get the engine out? You know, you get everything pulled and they have trouble clearing it, and they. Then the reason why is that you have, uh, let me go to the board and show you. Basically what happens when you go to pull out a Subaru engine, you've got the transmission here, and you've got the engine. It looks, we'll throw an oil pan in there just for kicks. But basically you've got your motor mounts with studs that stick down. Well, girl's been in here playing with the markers, so of course they're not going to work, sorry. And I'm not a huge fan of editing. Alright, we're back in business. So you've got the, let's zoom in, what's the deal here? So you've got the motor mount, and you've got the stud here, and then the motor has studs that go into the transmission. So here's your cradle. You've got everything unbolted. Try moving this out this way when you've got these studs that are stopping it. You know, the studs on the motor mount. So you lift it up, and then once you lift the thing up to where your studs clear. So say we got our studs so that they're up, and they just barely clear. Now there's so much torque right here that it won't pull out. I mean, that's a lot of tension because if you're pulling this whole thing up by your cherry picker and putting all that strain on those studs, studs that are threaded, they're not going to come out. So what you got to do is you've got to support the transmission with a jack stand. And then when the transmission is supported, you let down a little bit on this so that these can separate just a little. You just want barely separation, you want this to clear, and you want this to be um, clearing also. If you get this up as high as it'll go before it starts maxing out on hitting the body and hitting other stuff up here, you max that out and put a jack stand under it, let it down, you're just right. Um, if you're not, you know, then you're not going to clear. Let me show you what this looks like on the car. And uh, now you'll have a better understanding of what I'm going to attempt to explain. So I've got the manifold. I take the radiator and everything out as a unit. The intake manifold, everything's hooked up onto it that possibly can be. So those go real quick. Now, going underneath, you can see that before that I've got the engine supported. It looks like I'm a little too far on the jack stand. But that's as high as that'll go. It's pretty well mixed out. You can't get any more height off of that. And however much room I have there, I need that plus a little on my studs for the motor mount. So here's the holes for my motor mount. And you can see by looking in there that I'm not going to make it on this one. I'm going to have to throw a board or something. Look on the far side, see the motor mount um, right there. That one looks like it's cleared enough and that I'll be okay with that. But I do need to support the motor just a little bit better with the jack stand. I need to get a little scrap of wood or something in there. It will have to be pretty thin. I don't know how well you can see that, but the gap isn't much. But you can't have any gap because of the motor mount stud on this side. So I go up here to my uh, wood scrap box. And talk amongst yourselves. So I get this. Uh, what do I got? I got anything thinner? Perfect. That's about what I'm looking for right there. So I do a little custom trimming. Can you tell that I just really don't like editing? <laughs> My apologies, but. Man, I haven't done any filming at all since I've been pulling this thing apart and I can haul butt when I'm not filming. It's amazing. It's incredible how much faster I can get a motor out of one of these. So I tuck that in there and that'll be good for protecting it too. So, as you can see looking at the motor here, there's just a little bit of a crack, just barely. I'm actually going to close that up just a little. I'm going to start to pull on it, get a little wiggle. Um, 
let it down, let it separate. And I'm going to kind of rock it back and forth. I'm pulling up on the cylinder head as I'm grabbing it. And, you know, kind of pulling back and forth. It's got the worst sensation of fear of that camera falling off as I jiggle this. You want to make sure that you get your radiator out of here because if you pull a little too hard or something, it's hard to take it back, you know? It's like calling somebody a bad name at a bad time. You just can't take it back. So anyway, as you can see, I've got the engine out. Um, the studs have cleared. And now it's just a matter of up, up, and away. So you can see, if you can take the fans off, you can leave the radiator in. Don't leave the radiator in. <laughs> it's not worth it. You'll regret it. After, you know, anybody that's wrenched for a long time has skewered a radiator. I skewered one two years ago. I had somebody out here helping me. <laughs> and as part of their helping, you know, it's like, you know, when you're trying to hold up a motorcycle and somebody else is trying to hold it up too and you wind up fighting each other. It's one of those things. It's a real sad thing because the guy's trying to help me. Bless his heart, but didn't pan out well. So, anyway, here's what's happening. I'm just cranking this little critter up and out. Show you the new engine that's going in it. It's a crate motor from Colorado. And it is pretty spectacular. I mean, it's got a brand new everything. They're even using the factory silicone, the gray stuff. You know, all factory parts. I mean, spare no expense. They just really, you know, loaded for bear and went for it. And tell that it's a rebuilt motor because they didn't clean this up real, real well. I mean, they threw a little bit of medium at it, but no glass beads or nothing. So, anyway, that's about to go in. All of this to get to this point from driving it in took me, let's see, what time is it? It is 4.13. I started this at about 2 o'clock, so it's, well, I did watch part of a movie too before, you know, for lunch, so... It's taking like an hour and a half to get to this point, so that's not too bad. Um, a lot of people argue about, do you take the intake manifold off or do you leave it on? Um, with a standard transmission, I always leave it on, but with an automatic transmission, you got to pull these bolts out. It's a lot easier to just hit them with the impact and just get them through there. Uh, so I just pull it off if it's an automatic. And with this one, I have to pull it off anyway because the new engine, as you can see, doesn't come with one. So, easy decision, huh? So anyway, I hope you like this. hope that answers the questions about um, pulling the motors out. And uh, cheers.